welcome to Grandma's Tidbits. This is kind of this is a little poem. Rare gifts. Rare gifts I have to treasure. We have so many blessings, so many gifts from our Heavenly Father. Rare gifts I have to treasure. Their wealth cannot be told. They are valued more than diamonds or coffers filled with gold. They comfort me when sorrow drapes her mantle by my door. And add to all the joys of life a thousandfold or more. I love to share my joys and I'm thankful to share my sorrows. I guard these gifts deep in my heart. Their blessings know no end. The love of an eternal God, the kindness of a friend. Precious, precious treasures. Okay, this is my story, God's Police Car. Summer was passing us by and fall was fast approaching. It had been a good season this year. Earning one's living on the farm meant that the summer and fall months were meant must supply whatever income was needed for the rest of the year. The seven acres of corn that we had planted in the spring and then hold cultivated and watered all summer had responded to our hours and hours of hard work. Beautiful, big ears of juicy sweet corn waited to be picked and sold to the store. The stores. This was a particularly busy time of year. We not only picked and sorted, we also looked at each ear of corn to see that it was well matured but not overripe. We also checked to see that there were no worms in the corn before filling the big gunny sacks which held ten dozen ears each. Our attention to details had paid well, for the stores looked forward eagerly to getting their fresh roasting ears from us. They knew they would be getting the best, and we never tried to sell anything that was not the best. The people to whom my wife Margie and I especially enjoyed selling were the Indians. We had sold to them before we had started selling to the stores in the area. They knew us well and wanted and trusted us. These people were our friends and they knew that good corn, they knew what good corn looked like. You know, we'd got our corn from the Indians. They would buy a full sack of corn at a time and either eat, can, or dry the corn. We had pleasant days at the Indian Reservation. That's where my granddaughter is now in Arizona on a Navajo in, uh, Indian reservation teaching little children. The people in almost every household where we stopped bought something. We also had apples from our orchard and squash and other vegetables from the garden. The Indians appreciated our fresh food. One particular day we had gone to the Indian fishing grounds which were several miles away. We covered the area and sold 29 sacks of corn. There's a little store, I said to Marjorie. Maybe we can sell the last sack of corn there. I stopped in front of the store and walked inside. Margie waited in the pickup. The pay for the whole pickup load of corn and a good part of our summer's work was in my billfold. Store. It looked more like a saloon and a gambling joint to me. This wasn't where I wanted to be, but before I could turn to leave, two big men grabbed me by the arms and announced, here is a fellow who will gamble with us. I don't gamble, I answered, looking around to see if I could find a friend or someone who knew me, but all were strangers. Sure you do. I don't know how to gamble. We'll teach you. All this time they were dragging me to the back of the room and through a door to another room in the back of the first room. The situation did not look good. I felt my only help, hope, would be from God and I asked him to take over and protect me. 
the money I had was needed for many things at home. I continued to pray as the fellows commanded me to put all of my money out on the table. While I was praying, the men dropped their hold on me. They and the dozen or so other men in the room fled out the back door. As I whirled around and dashed to the front of the store, I saw an Oregon State police car that had pulled up to the entrance of the building. That's what those men saw. But by the time I got outside, the dark blue police car was gone. My wife, who had been sitting there in the pickup, looked at me in surprise when I asked, where was the police car? Where is it gone? She had not seen it. Just one road ran between the river and the rock wall. There was no place for that car to have gone. But it wasn't there. I started the pickup and hurried down the road. Where was that police car? It had just disappeared. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. Psalms 91.11 Margie repeated when I finished telling her what had happened. While our pickup carried us over the mountains to our home, we felt God's loving presence and continually praised and thanked him for his protection. The Lord is so good to us. He takes good care of his children.